Good afternoon, everyone. Uh, I'm going to talk about uh, cluster file today, uh, which is a tool that um, we are working on to support interactive and interactive visual clustering analysis. As, we, as, you, as you guys know, that uh, clustering is one of the most basic uh, data mining tools. And um, as such, by automatically dividing data into subsets based on similarity, clustering algorithms really provides provide a simple yet powerful means to explore structures and data. Right? And uh, because of that, clustering is widely used and available in standard data mining tools. And data scientists typically perform clustering analysis using high-level scripts like, such as R and MATLAB. And although one of the nice things about clustering is that it is um, unsupervised, somewhat automated, uh, still data scientists need to make decisions about uh, you know, uh, which clustering method to use, which similarity measure to take, which samples to include, which f features to exclude, and what granularity of clustering that they want to take, and how to present the results. Right? So once you make those decisions, you can get your clustering results. And, but if you, if you want to change any of those decisions, right, if you want to consider different features, different subsets of the data or different clustering method, what you need to do, you need to go back to your script. All right. Although tools such as R and MATLAB are very powerful and flexible, they have very limited support for iterative and interactive uh, workflow that facilitates quick turnaround with data. And in the end, that is really essential for hypothesis generation and testing. That's exactly why we start working on cluster file to facilitate interactive and iterative clustering analysis. In particular, cluster of file helps data scientists to interactively compute discrete and continuous data clusters, quickly experiment with different choices of clustering and data parameters, explore clusters in a multi-scale fashion, fashion using isolations, whether those clusters are generated automatically or arbitrarily selected by the user, and reason about clustering instances in relation to data dimensions. Uh, so cluster of file has three basic visualizations. And as usual, those, those visualizations are coordinated. So uh, we have a table of raw data sets, a scatter plot of planar projections, and matrix diagram of um, heat map, basically, representing discrete clusterings. Right? These views are coordinated through regression and linking and dynamic cross-filtering. So our tables are you know, dynamic, can be searched interactively, can be exported as uh, desired, can be filtered through using a mini-expression language. Right, those are basics we cover. Um, our clustering visualization, again, is very basic. Is that heat map, the goal is to give a quick overview of what, what makes different clusters different. Right? In that view, uh, color encodes the average feature value for each cluster. Columns correspond to clusters themselves. In this case, they are sorted from largest cluster to, to smallest one. And rows correspond to features. Okay. So one of the, one of the um, goals of the tool was to provide variation, continuous variation within the clusters for users. So when you use discrete clustering methods, such as hierarchical clustering, k-means, what you have is you have discrete subsets of the data grouped by similarity. But the, the variation within clusters or across clusters uh, is suppressed. So we use uh, projections obtained by distance embedding methods to co convey those continuous variations in data. So basically, our projection view is, is a scatter plot uh, of dimensionally reduced uh, data. Right? Here, each point corresponds to a single point, single data point, position and cost data similarity, right? and color encodes the clusterings. So we have four clusters here, four different colors. And um, so one of the things that overlook in general in those tools is you know, we would like to provide interactive visualizations, but you need to also still provide quantitative measures on, on 
what you are comparing on those clusters. So in addition to basic statistical computations, point-based statistical computations, we are also uh, incrementally adding more interesting uh, statistical measures in our tool. Uh, you can run another test on, on clusters. Um, you can use basic correlations. And we are really uh, interested in, in this aspect, adding more quantitative measures, both in our representations and, and also when you want to you know, compare uh, clusters themselves. So you know, this, is, oh, this took me t five minutes. Now I want to focus on the re remaining of the talk is in, in two interaction methods we develop to make sense of those low-dimensional representations, projections. So you know, dimensionality reduction, um, distance reductions, distance embeddings are, are used a lot. I would say sometimes overused. Um, but how to interpret them, how to make sense of them, this is not clear always. Right? So, yeah, here's a, a PC projection of, um, of the data set. Um, we, will, we will talk about that in a little bit in detail. Um, but the first question when you show this kind of stuff to users, you know, what do axes mean? Right? What do dimensions mean? So um, we are experimenting two interaction methods here to really help users to reason about those representations. The first one is for the projection. So let's think about it. Um, so the given data, so each point in that you know, projection represents my high dimensional data point. What I want to do, I want to really be able to pick the data, change it, perturb it, and see how that change changes, perturbs the projection. Right? If I can do that dynamically, that's very nice. Because it's useful understanding the importance and sensitivity of features is really key goal in exploratory data analysis. Right, so let's look at this. Let me see if it's going to play. Right, this data set is um, OECD data set where you have 35 countries uh, with nine features. Each feature indicates a development index. So right, right now, user is going to change one feature, student skills, for Portugal and see how that changes the the, the projection. That square icon represents Portugal. It's a proxy for Portugal. And the other two circles that is closer to uh, are Japan and Korea. So one idea is that, oh, I can go and play with those features and see how the change changes the, the projection stuff. So now, uh, if, if Portugal increases, the hypothesis here, if Portugal increases certain sickles value, right? It can get closer to it can get closer to Korea and Japan in development. That's only one hypothesis. Right. Right. Um, so there's a related project uh, visualization we develop. You, know, you can go and try different different forward projections to explore the data and its projection. But ideally, what you want to do is you want to see how those projections look like in advance. That's what ProLines do. ProLines, given a data point, and it's this feature, what we uh, do first, we compute the standard deviation of that feature in the complete data set, and devise a range. And we go to iterate over this range through forward projections. And connect those forward projected points on a line. And we call that line uh, a pro line for that future and for that data point. Okay. Uh, so it's an example here. Of course, forward projections and pro lines are lines, linear lines in PCA projections, for example. When you have linear projections, linear dimensionality methods that you use, those lines are going to be lines. And it's a question that how they are going to look like with nonlinear uh, distance embedding methods. The natural extension of this method is backward projection, right? Now I have a, so I pick the point, data point, play with that, see the change in the projection. So I want to do the opposite, right? I mean, I can go and play features and forward projections, but other way of doing that, if I, 
you know, if I want to move Portugal closer to Korea or Japan, more natural way of doing it to move the Portugal towards Korea and see how it changes the data itself. Yes, I'm playing with the projection and back projecting that uh, change in the projection to the data space. Uh, here is an example from, all right, here we are gonna project, back project Turkey. All right, we have that square represents Turkey and I'm gonna move that proxy circle, sorry, square towards Greece. Greece and Turkey are similar countries in many aspects. But I wanna see what's gonna happen. All right, so here, all right, so if, if Turkey wants to be like Greece, you know, it should increase all development indices except working long hours. I mean, that's, that's of course that the hypothesis that you come up with this interaction. Of course, yeah, yeah, you guys are familiar with the dimensionality reduction methods. The first question is there are infinitely many back projections from plane to the data space. So because of that, cluster of files supports uh, both constrained and unconstrained back projections. So you can enter uh, bound constraints and apply back projections. Here's a, um, another example where user fixes certain features and apply back projections. Uh, here we are going to move Portugal. So the, the features that you see at logs, they are logs, those are fixed features and uh, there are free features. In this case, if Portugal wants to be like Korea, uh, you know, it should increase uh, almost in all aspects is green cells except the life satisfaction. So there's a cost for development. All right, um, cost profile is basically a tool that we are currently working up on it's a prototype, and the main goal is to perform virtual analysis like uh, running and doing experiments, right? So it supports, it aims to support quick iterative what-if analysis, and the techniques that I introduce, introduce here, uh, uh, forward projection, backward projection, those are general techniques that can be applied to, to linear and nonlinear methods. All right, I'm gonna conclude my talk with the discussion points. And thanks for your attention. Thank you. Thank you. So we have time for a few questions. Okay, maybe I'll start with one. So in in the last part of the demo, the way you show where you can allow to drag the instance uh, directly. So would it be helpful, for example, to to overlay some sort of heat map like on top of that. So instead of the user have to drag around, they visually they will auto see ah. So maybe this region uh, would be would have that kind of feature combination and the other region. That would be interesting, yes. Something like yeah. that. Yes. Okay, great. Any other questions from the audience? Okay, well let's let's thank the speaker again. Thank you.